Namaste. Before we begin, I had a question for you. Which internet browser do you use on your desktop computer, your laptop or your Mac machine? Recently, I came across some interesting data from workforce scientist Michael Hossman. He found that most people who used Firefox and Chrome browsers were more committed and better performers at their jobs than people who used Internet Explorer or Safari. They remained in their jobs 15% longer. They were 19% less likely to miss work. They had significantly higher sales and their call times were shorter. They had more satisfied customers. What's the reason for Firefox and Chrome users being uh, better performers? Hosman explored and he found that the reason wasn't that uh, they were tech savvy. The reason was they were the kind of people who questioned the default. Internet Explorer is the default browser that comes with Windows operating system and Safari is the default browser that comes along with Mac. To get Firefox or Chrome, you have to demonstrate some resourcefulness and download a different browser. Instead of accepting the default, you have to take a bit of initiative to seek out an option that might be better. And that act of initiative reflects an attitude that explains the better performance of Firefox and Chrome users. When it comes to life, the sad reality is we live in an Internet Explorer world. Many of us accept the defaults in our lives. In life, we experience happiness and we also experience suffering even though we don't want to. But somehow, subconsciously, we have accepted the default setting that we have to go through at least some amount of suffering. This acceptance is so ingrained that when we are experiencing only happiness, we feel awkward. We feel it's too good to be true. We wake up in the morning and think, work is going well, I am healthy, everyone around is healthy, no major crisis going on. Is this the silence before the storm? I know there's a catch here. Suffering must be lurking right around the corner. As they say, we are always waiting for the other shoe to drop. By the way, this expression originated in the early 1900s in America when people were migrating to the cities. They were crammed into tenement housing where you could literally hear your upstairs neighbor taking off his shoes at night. Once you heard the first shoe hit the floor, you waited for the other shoe to drop. A kind of painful anticipation, getting ready for the inevitable. Similarly, we may be experiencing happiness, but we kind of painfully know that suffering is soon going to strike. We have kind of accepted that that's what life is like, a combination of happiness and suffering. So even though we may be actively trying to find solutions 
to the problems we are going through. We never consider searching for a permanent solution to all suffering. You may be even wondering if I have gone crazy and insane to even propose that a permanent solution to all suffering exists. Before you turn off the video thinking this course is crap, let me clarify that I am speaking about suffering and not pain. There is a difference between the two. Pain physical or emotional that's part of life it's inevitable we go through it routinely but while we are going undergoing pain whether we want to suffer or not that's always optional a person could be experiencing pain severe pain physical or emotional but deep within could still be experiencing joy because true joy, ananda, is a state of being. It's different from sukha, another Sanskrit word that refers to a superficial sense of happiness. Now you may be thinking that ananda is for yogis in the Himalayas, not for me. It's too high beyond the reach of a common man. If you are thinking like that, it again shows you have settled for the default. Let me remind you that if the Wright brothers had settled for the default setting that men and women weren't meant to fly, only birds were meant to fly, we wouldn't have airplanes today. Arjuna wasn't a yogi in the Himalayas. He was a warrior, a diplomat, a family man. And yet, he asked Sri Krishna for a permanent solution to all suffering. And so, the Bhagavad Gita was spoken. The Bhagavad Gita has served as a self-help book for centuries. It will perhaps stop the all-time bestseller list for self-help books. But why is the Bhagavad Gita so successful? The next time we meet, we shall find an answer to that question.